Greetings, everyone. Your Excellency Ambassador Erica Bennett, Head of Mission of the Diaspora Africa Forum, and Dr. Tony Luck. We are on our way to pick up Mother Viola Ford Fletcher and Uncle Red Hughes Ellis, 107 year old, and her 100 year old brother, to spend a week with us in Ghana. We are so delighted. What do you think, Ambassador? I am just so excited. I'm on top of the moon. <laughs> I cannot wait to see her and say, Ah, Waba, welcome to Ghana. And Ambassador Bennett is trying to steal her, I'm going on the record, trying to steal her from me to be the only granddaughter. So we're going to negotiate. <laughs> I'm going to be the favorite. I just have to say it. I know I'm going to be the favorite. So thank you for joining our journey our Black Truth members and people who are online. And uh, we're going to keep you posted every second of the way. Hey, what's up, everybody? Thank you for checking me out. This is Eko Simpson. If this is your first time of checking out my videos, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, I'm trying to create a platform for all of us to share and to connect. So if this is your first time of checking out my videos, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel. I've had a lot of connections with the diaspora, but let me tell you how it started. Way back when I was a kid, we used to go to the Cape Coast Castle because I am from Cape Coast, which is the first basic school in Ghana called Philip Kwaku Boy. So if you've been to the castle, you realize that during the tour, the tour guide will tell you about Philip Kwaku. So he's the first black man to be sent to England to learn uh, missionary work. So when he came back, he set up a school at the castle and then later he got a land and then they built the uh, school. There. So I'm, I'm fortunate to have being enrolled in the first school you know basic school in ghana so during that time we would walk to the castle and then that's that's where i got to realize there was an african diaspora so we got there and then we saw these black brothers and sisters even though we all speak english but these were kind of like slanging and all that i was like hey what's up that's nice i would like to connect so me and my brother and his friends we used to write our names you know, on a sheet of paper with our um, address. So when we meet any black American, we used to call them black Americans. Say, hey, black American, hey, hello, hello, this is my address, this is my address. You know, we used to give it to them. And they write me a letter, right? And I know some of you wrote us letters, you know. I received a couple of letters from, you know, those who came. And it was nice, it was pretty nice. And we were connecting. So me dealing with African diaspora started way back till now and i'm still doing it maybe it's a calling of the most high to you know be doing this and be connecting you to the motherland so it's been beautiful doing this and i still look forward to connecting especially with younger brothers and sisters i've been connecting with a lot of them those who are there and those who've made a trip to the motherland and we've been connecting it's been it's been beautiful always a few days ago a chance on an article um, in the you know most of the Ghanaian uh, medium talking about the Tesla race massacre so I was like what is what is that so I googled and I realized that in 1921 there about uh, there was a massive race massacre on uh, the black community in Tesla Oklahoma and I was I was astonished, I was amazed how a group of white people with guns, wherever they got it from, from their officials or from the police or whatever, raided the African community in Tesla, Oklahoma and killed everybody. Uh, it, it's, 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 it's just mind-blowing that I can't even agree to accept that such thing happened to our brothers and sisters. I love, I love the fact that each and every day I get to learn something new about what happened during slavery. Yeah, enough of what we've learned here, but I'm happy when I get to hear from your side of the story what really went down. So I googled and I read and I realized that no, our brothers and sisters have been, have, have, have gone through a lot of hell. And I think this is the best time for us to connect I mean, nobody is asking anybody to leave, but we are asking us, yes, us, to just connect. Fast forward, Ghana has successfully welcomed two 
of the Tesla Massacre survivors, talking about Viola Ford Fletcher, who is 107 years old, and then huge Van Ellis, her brother, who is 100 years old. Now, I ask this question. God has kept them this long for them to tell us a story. And this is the right time. You know, Ghana has become the spotlight for the African diaspora. Yes, I will say this is true because of one, our language, and because two, slavery really started. Most of the things that took place started from Ghana. So that connection has been established. And I believe it's, it's, it's God's calling on some of us to keep connecting us together. So uh, they arrived in Ghana, beautiful ceremony organized for them at the airport. I wasn't privy to this information, so I couldn't go and get you a um, beautiful shot for your viewing. So I went onto the internet and then I got some videos which doesn't belong to me. So I'm making a disclaimer here. The next videos that I'm going to show doesn't belong to me. It belongs to others that I took for fair use so that I could give you, my subscribers, the information and everything that is happening here in Ghana. So go ahead. Let's go to the next video and experience whatever happened. Thank you very much for checking me out. This is to inform you of some of the events that is happening here in the motherland. Thank <laughs> you. 